Hello and welcome to On The Curbs. I'm your host, Team Albus Daily. Joining me this week is an up-and-coming Italian rally driver who's planning on throwing herself straight into the deep end when it comes to racing. That's because Rebecca Busi wants to make the infamous Dakar Rally her first ever proper racing event. As you can tell, her ambitions are high, but she's not fooling herself into how tricky this will be. We chatted about this, what she's been doing to prepare for this monumental challenge, what other forms of motorsport she'd love to do, where she'd travel back in time to, and much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you for being here today. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And you? Yeah, I'm pretty good, thank you. So the first question I ask everyone who comes on here, what first got you into motorsport? As uh, I try to explain on my post, uh, I really don't know uh, what Kate, what take me in motorsport because I, I'm kind of born with uh, this big passion uh, for uh, my parents, for uh, my father, absolutely yes. Uh, he he was he used to ride a um, motorcycle in the rally on the sand, like Farron's rally or things like that. Mm. So I I grew up with engine and bikes and cars so i think i'm born like that so it's just always been there it was inevitable <laughs> yeah so then you're saying you grew up around like bikes and lots of cars and engine and all this kind of thing why did you decide to get into rallying specifically rather than a different form of motorsport so actually i like whatever has four wheels Actually, this is the truth. Uh, I don't like uh, bikes, but I like cars. Um, I grew up also with the might, the dream of the Dakar. And mm. uh, I always wanted to uh, uh, try to rally like that. I mean, uh, there are many different kind of rallies, but the rally raid is the one that passionate me. Um, maybe because you have to trust on yourself and what you feel to ride because the co-pilot give you only the direction not the exactly mm-hmm. note and the most difficult uh you race say it's not an easy, Dakar, not an so easy race, so. <laughs> yeah and so some days the the people doing it are lucky that they finished never mind finishing in a good place so it's finishing is its own kind of reward in that one so you're not um you're not aiming low <laughs> No, I mean, I would like win, but I look at the truth of the situation and it's my first experience as a driver. I mm. choose the Dakar rally because it's, I think, the perfect uh, scenario for uh, uh, come inside this world, for arrive, just for say, hey, I'm also here. Uh, so I choose that because instead make many rallies in Spain or Italy. I say yes to myself, okay, let's bet on me and let's do the king of the rallies. Then I'm you here. I either do it all or nothing kind of thing. It's just you might as well just go all in and try the most difficult thing straight away. Because if you can do that, then the other ones should be fine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think to be good enough or better than someone than someone else, but I know that I'm determined. And before Morocco week, uh, I I never touched sand with the wheels or the off road things. So everything in Morocco was new, and I say to myself the second day, okay, you can go, you can go. And the second day, I was doing. 110 kilometers per hour on off-road. I say, okay, let's let this is fine. Let's see the sand now. But anyway, it's I was I was gonna say you mentioning that because you're saying Dakar is gonna be the first one, first race you properly get into. So this year, 2021, what have you been doing kind of racing wise? You were saying about Morocco, you put I believe you said you had a, a week there where you were just kind of it was a crash course in in everything. Tell us about that. Yeah, actually, I went to Morocco 
because uh, I need that to train it for the Docker. And uh, the best scenario close to the Docker environment is exactly Morocco. And I spend uh, 88 days um, in the sand and rocks and every scenario I can find in Docker. Um, also, I broke a wheel, so a suspension. I mean, I did my work well. Um, but yes, I for sure, if you want to do an experience like the Dakar, you have you must do you must go in Morocco, sure, because uh, it's the best way to train. I think as well, you're saying you, you broke a tire and or a wheel, sorry, and suspension, but I feel like that's a good thing in a way because you don't want to be doing that the first time in the Dakar itself. And then yeah, <laughs> but it's, this is really this is really true. I mean, uh, uh, also um, at the first days, I never got stuck in the sand, and my copilot say no. We we have to, we have to because I, I don't want that you got stuck in the Dakar for us the first time. So <laughs> he he went out from the car and he started to. to <laughs> Then the, in the way that the, my car got stuck there. And so every scenario I leave it in, um, in Morocco are really useful also for the Dakar. And this is really important because now I know what to do, what not to do, or how fast it can be. So uh, yes, these uh, uh, mistakes that we can call it um, are very it's good useful. mistakes though. You, you need to have those. I feel like if you weren't having those, you would maybe feel like you weren't pushing enough. Whereas if you push and it goes wrong, at least you know you were really trying and pushing it all on, on the line, you know? Yeah. So then, I mean, this, that was a, an amusing story anyway with the, the co-pilot just getting out and just basically digging a hole for your car. But um, yeah, I, In Morocco, I got stuck the first time, the first day. Um, there is also a video in my profile, I, I think, uh, and nothing else. Just that time, and I learned it pretty okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other times I got uh, stuck in the sand, it was for my co-pilot because he needed to do it. You were saying that as well that you were practicing on different, um, so you're on like a hot road on the sand. Which one of those did you find easiest to, to adapt to? Oh, sure, the off-road and like uh, rocks, because, okay. because the yeah, <laughs> for me, the difficult part was understand the sand, because you have to understand what you see, what you look and where you have to go. And with the sand, it's a bit difficult to do that. Hmm. Um, and it's the opposite with the rock. There are some like... Uh, mm, things that you have to look to and you can uh, try to understand what you have after that so uh i i got more comfortable with uh, the rocks uh, and go faster there hmm. instead of sand. i suppose it's one of those things i might be i might be completely wrong but i'll say it anyway um that with the rocks generally they kind of stay where they are whereas the sand that can move all over the place with weather or other conditions. So you have to be constantly working out what's going on with it. Whereas the rocks, at least, you have some yeah, idea. I mean, the, I for what I learned in there uh, with the rocks, you can see. Uh, okay, you are you are going pretty fast with your car. You can, with the rocks, you can see uh, the big one, so you can move. Hmm. Or if you see some uh, um, some kind of uh, uh, plants, you hmm. know that maybe there there is a little gap, so you had to break or just go slow down. Yeah. Yeah, and you know uh, the rocks you can see properly. Uh, what you have on the front is exactly what you are going to find. With the sand, if there is a, a big dune, you don't know what there is after that. And you cannot go, get out from the car and go to sea. You have to drive to do it. And uh, you have to be ready to go right or left uh, mm -hmm. or 
to break but if you break you know that you get stuck sometime so uh, for what i learned it i think i prefer rocks instead <laughs> But it's also true that with the rocks, uh, it's very easy to break something in the car. So definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's it's like a knife. It's two sides. It's being the fence or something like that. And I suppose as well, the more you drive on the sand, the more experience you'll have, and the more you'll get used to it. So you'll know what to to deal yeah. with more. So that sure, of course. It was my first days on the sand. I found a more difficult learn. But actually, the last day um, I went through all the desert in Morocco, and without got stuck, without pissed, uh, so very off road. That's good. And too. I was, I was really, I was, I felt good. Mm. But you know, from a training to the Dakar, there is. Yeah. A, but again, it's good that you have a bit of positive there at least, so you can carry that momentum. Yeah. After Dakar, once you tick that off your list, you were saying earlier that you love anything with four wheels. Would you want to try uh, any other form of motorsport? And if so, which? So actually, uh, I'm planning to do other rally like uh, I would like to do it. It depends on sponsor, it depends on many things. Uh, but I would like continue the cross country rally uh, mm -hmm. because I would like make also Dakar in 2023. Yes. But it's also true that I want to develop my skill and my career. So I was looking to make uh, some other race in some other scenario like GT or things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would see what would happen, yeah, because I think um, I don't want to be... Uh, in one place, only one place, because you know, I, it's my first race. I don't know what will happen after, and I need to continue my career in somehow. So mm -hmm. I will try to do my best as a where I can, of sure. But I come from the cart, so the PC is my like bread. I can see mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and I suppose it's it's good that um, you're not trying to like choose like one specific thing over another you kind of you love everything with the four wheels so if, and if something comes if an opportunity comes your way you you can say yes to it and don't have to worry about it because you just you enjoy all of it yeah i mean the only things i know that i'm not going to do is the regular rally but i love to look at it but mm -hmm. actually drive with uh, this kind of uh, navigation, I don't like too much. So this is one thing that I will not try, I guess. But uh, yeah, I mean, I won't develop my skill. And the, other, the only way to develop your skill is try everything. And, uh, um, you know, mm, develop yourself as a driver. Mm -hmm. And the only thing, and the only way is, uh, is drive more you drive more you get better it sounds so easy <laughs> yeah um, it, it sounds like that but it's not <laughs> <laughs> but on top of that as well then um if you again more experience the better is there a driver that you would love to work with in the future okay i can dream i dream <laughs> you can dream of course you can <laughs> yeah i would like uh, for sure work with nasser it's kind of my hero, so it's, uh, I think he's the best uh, all the time. So I really would like have a chance to work with him. Mm -hmm. um, but also I have a big consider of uh, Petrancel as well. Yeah, and I would like also work with uh, Cristina Gutierrez. She's the first woman mm -hmm. to have a title so i would like to uh, work with her oh, i'm sure she's been uh, been good in extreme e this year as well i don't know if you've been yeah. looking at that but she's been doing or doing all right there yeah she did she did a big step for us oh yeah be, well you, as you say you can dream and you never know if that, that car goes well then who knows yeah who knows that's right so then away from racing what do you like to do for fun Racing. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I mean, um, uh, my days are really, really busy. Uh, I'm in uh, one international uh, master in mm-hmm. economy in uh, Barcelona. So half of my day is for study. Uh, then I have to train uh, and after that, I'm quite dead. So maybe, maybe sleep is the, is the fun bit. <laughs> yeah, so, but anyway, I like to uh, stay outside uh, and make hiking or things that make me close to the nature. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when I have time, not, yeah. not <laughs> now, but when I have it. Well, it makes you enjoy it more, I suppose, when you do have the time for it. Yeah, I mean, if I can enjoy, uh, also, I like go karting with my friends. So it's it's always related to some, something I have four wheels. And so I'm, I'm noticing this. Yeah. So then another random question. What animal would you be and why? Um, so this is a good one. Um, <laughs> Because tricky my, favorite, <laughs> my favorite animal is not the same I want to be. I mean, my favorite is the wolf, but if you ask me that, I answer to you the eagle because uh, the eagle is free to is free to go everywhere. She's free, mm-hmm. and it's, she's not related to the land or to the ocean like the other animals. So, yeah, if I have to be something some animal i will choose the eagle and you get to fly i mean that's got to be fun yeah you can fly everywhere no problem at all i like that (laughs) um where would you love to visit that you haven't had the chance yet uh i would like uh, to visit uh, uh, america i travel a Mm -hmm. lot but i never been there so i really would like visit america and uh yeah, and also Australia. So places like, where you can get a lot of racing done as well. I'm just noticing as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, my, the best thing is going there because I have to race. This is could be like... You can, you can get to nature there, you can race there, you can have a nice time. It's got everything. Yeah, yeah, a dream. <laughs> and finally, if you could go back in time at any point in history, where would you visit? Um, I would like visit the uh, um, first Dakar mm-hmm. and be there as the first woman, probably. Go rewrite history. Nice. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, when the things happen are the most exciting time. And mm-hmm. when Dakar started, they didn't know what are what they are going to do there. I mean, uh, I know uh, my first coach in Morocco was uh, Graziano Pelanconi. Mm-hmm. He made uh, 19 Dakar. Oof. That's a lot, 19. I was a good teacher though, I'm, if, if that yeah, experience worked for yeah. you. <laughs> That's why I never got, get, I never got stuck in the sand because I, have, I had yeah. a good teacher. Uh, so he said that the first Dakar were the one that no organization, uh, they, they went with uh, the, a t-shirt, not the mm-hmm. race kit. and the food you was that bad. <laughs> the food was bad and he, he lost the first Dakar, I guess, 10 kilos, something like that. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot. And he say there the navigation was really hard because nobody makes wretches like now. Where, no. okay, go, oh, you had to arrive there. Yeah, so, good luck. Yeah, good luck. It was a really uh, a very adventurous event. There's, 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 a, there's a new diet for everyone. If you want to lose 10 kilograms quickly, go do a Dakar. <laughs> you can do it like that. Yeah school yeah and i think it was really exciting to go there without knowing what happened or that's it's a kind of adventure i would like that definitely be a good cool adventure to go on i like that 
Well, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. I want to wish you the best of luck with your Dakar plan and training for it and all, all the rest of it for, for this year and next year. And hopefully we see you there in 2023. Yeah, I hope. Thank you very much for this interview. It was awesome to chat with Rebecca. I'm loving her everything or nothing approach to racing and I really hope she succeeds in the 2023 Dakar and beyond. I want to thank her again for coming onto the show and I hope to have her back on again in the future. Join me again soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out the other videos on the On The Curbs YouTube channel. Away from YouTube, you can find me over on Drive Tribe and feel free to follow me on Instagram at t.elbers.daily.drivetribe. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again next week for the next episode.